So now we want to lay things out in Illustrator. Something like I have here, where you can see everything lined up. Um, so the top of the skull, the bottom of the skulls match up along the horizontal. Um, and we're going to have the adult on top, the juvenile below, and everything here should line up vertically. The labels and a two centimeter border all the way around. So I've just used guides to mark that off. So let's start by placing our uh, images. I'm just going to hide all this stuff. You can see I've made a layer just for guides. Um, it's always good to keep your guides on a separate layer. Just using my space bar to move around here. And on the guides layer, if you want to make a guide, you just drag out from the, uh, the ruler, pull that out. So now when we want to bring those images in that we created, we can, just like we always have, we can go to File, Place, and navigate to where they are. So I'll bring in my section. Now you can see I brought it in, it's on the guides layer, and that's not what I want. I should have created a new layer first. So I'll create it now, and this is still selected. And I can drag in the layers palette the little dot on the far right that indicates the selected object. Just drag it up to this layer. And I'll continue to do that to get my other ones in. Uh, okay. Again, that should be on a different layer, so I can just drag it, create a new one, put it on there. And I'll be smart this time, create a new layer. And go to File, Place. Now you'll notice I'm not clicking Link down here when I choose the file. And that was the front view, so I need the lateral view. There we go. So we're going to put ours this way with the interior view first, the lateral view in the middle, and then the section view here. Now, if we want to line these things up, but if we use the align tools, which are actually quite handy, um, it's not going to work because uh, we didn't crop them so the top of each one was exactly the same. So if I do an align function here, it'll work, but the, you can see the top of the skulls don't match. So we're just going to have to do this by eye instead. So I'll just pop back into my guides layer, drag down a guide that's going to sort of match the top of the skulls here. Then I'll just have to fix them up a little bit. I can option scroll wheel to get in a little bit closer. I can use the arrow keys to nudge these around. So you can see I'm just lining up the top of the skull with the guide here. Use my space bar to move. This one's got to go way up, so I'm using my keyboard arrows to do that. Now I just want to make sure these should be, you know, roughly the same scale. I'm just going to drag another guide down, make sure the bottom of the bones match. These two, this one seems to be a little bit off. And my scale might be off a little bit. So at this stage, I can, if I want to, just grab the object and scale it, holding down shift, of course, to get it at the same size as the other ones. So there we go. We've got that laid out. And we want to... Oops. We want to also add labels and things. So you can see here I've got labels and I'm not going to go through um, setting all of these up. It looks like I've got all these skulls a little too high so I can grab each of them and just drag them down together. If I hold down shift after I start dragging it will lock them into just moving in the vertical. Now my I should probably have my labels on top of everything here. So I'm using a font called Gil Sans. Um, so you want to put a label, uh, a title up here. You can adjust the font size to match. So I'm going to do something maybe around 22. I 
think I've got two different fonts going on here, so I can go and select Gil Songs, and then the species, the genus and species name, we want to change this to Talic. And then I can bold this part. I'm just going to bold. Oops. Sorry, I made a mistake here. This one's going to be bold italic. Something like that. And then we would bring in the other images, but I also want you to label some things here. Now, a couple of things. I want you to label the splanchnocranium versus the neurocranium. So the neurocranium is the brain case, and the splanchnocranium is the facial skeleton. Oops. Go out of my text tool here. So the splanchnocranium includes the maxilla, mandible, the zygoma, the nasal bone. So it's going to be something that includes this part of the zygoma. It's going to, you can see where they changes from the frontal bone to the zygoma here. So the brow ridge is part of the splank, or the neurocranium, the brain case. And then this zygoma is part of the um, splanchnocranium, the facial. Um, the facial skeleton. So I've done this already with different ones. So let me just open this up so we can see. Uh, okay, nope, I deleted that. So what we want to do is um, draw the outline of the entire um, skull because we want the two versions to match up perfectly so I'll do that now let's of course create another layer for that go to the ones I just brought in I'll create a new layer for this on top go to my pen tool and I'm going to do this very quickly now but you should do this with more care. So this is getting get confusing in a second, so I don't want to fill, I want to stroke, so I'll switch that and maybe a stroke of a different color. It's easier to see. So that bright blue. Again, uh, don't take the quality here as a guide just the general process. So I'm going to go through and outline the entire skull. Not the skin part, but just the skull. And let's say now I filled this with this blue color. Now we can use blend modes in Illustrator too. So if I select this if I select this object that I just created you can see up here it says opacity and I can change the opacity say to something like 50 and now we can see through it if I click on opacity though it gives me the chance to change this to something like a screen or an overlay so overlay would be good here um, so it's going to do something both to the white and black pixels below and we can change the opacity in here too to whatever we want. So this isn't showing us one region, it's showing us the whole, whole skull now. So we want to um, take this and duplicate it. So just duplicate this layer just by dragging it onto the new layer button at the bottom. And then we want to cut both of them along the same line. So again, the splanchnocranium, which is the face, 
It's going to follow a path like this. Now I'm going to make a new layer for this and <clears throat> give it a stroke. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't do that when I have that selected. Deselect. And so the new one that we're going to create, give it a stroke that we can see. So I'll make this one red just so it's easy to see. And use the pen tool. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. And so this, you'll see I'm starting totally outside of the drawing here. And I'm going around the mandibular condyle and the temporal mandibular joint. I'm following along here. So there's a division between the zygoma and the temporal bone on the zygomatic arch here. It's kind of hard to see where it is. It's going to be somewhere like this. So we're going to make this division. So we're defining the border between the splanchnocranium, facial skeleton, and the neurocranium. So the change is right around here. And then we're just going to go all the way around like this. Okay, I'm going to change that to a red fill instead. So you can see how they lie over top of each other. Now, if we put these objects on the same layer, so one copy of the blue part, the whole skull, and one part of the uh, part that's defining the splanchnocranium, we can clip one away from the other. So let's just make a duplicate of that thing we just drew first. And now in the one we are working on, let me make these a little bit bigger. So this one splanchnocranium, it's sort of a mask. If I select that, I can drag it onto the blue layer here. Now we don't need this layer anymore. So let me just hide everything else for a second. So we're just left with these two things. Now if we select both of them, and they have to be on the same layer for this, now we can open up a window called the Pathfinder. Mine's open already. Pathfinder here. And it gives you some idea of what it does. So we want to get the intersection of these two things. So we can just click on that, and it just leaves us with this one piece. Now, I was a little bit sloppy about this, and I expect you to try and uh, be a little more careful. And you may have to look up some references for this, although I can say there's not much for chimpanzee. You can look at humans and try and find uh, something about the division between the splanchnocranium and the neurocranium. But the guide I'm giving you is roughly correct. So if we turn this on again, and now if we click on this and change the, I don't have anything selected, let me select this first, change this to overlay. Now you can see that it's overlaying that color on top. I can change its opacity, something like 50. Now we're going to do the same thing with the neurocranium. So we already have a copy of both of these, so we'll turn on this, turn on this. But this one we kind of want to just reverse. So we can just adjust it by grabbing its controls, its anchor points. And I'm just dragging these outside ones over here. We're leaving the ones on the border exactly in place. So the ones that actually cut over the skull we're leaving in place. And just making sure the rest encapsulates the rest of the skull. Because now we can just drag this thing while it's still selected. And I'll select it with the black arrow to be sure. Just drag it down onto the other whole skull layer. Now we can do the same thing with the Pathfinder. Just select these two things. Oh, I've got the skull image selected too. So I'm just going to temporarily lock that. And with those two selected, I can do the intersection again. And now I've got both of them. And I can change its blend mode to overlay and change its opacity to 50%. And you can see they fit together. There's no seam. That's why you have to get that 
borderline perfect the first time. But I want to remap the color of the neurocranium part. There's a button up here for that, recolor artwork, and just click on that. And now we can just do a, a chroma shift. So we've got hue, saturation, and brightness. We want to keep brightness and saturation the same. And just shift this over to get, let's say, a, a cool color. So we have a warm color for down there. So it's a good contrast and easy to see. And that's how we can uh, identify the splanchnocranium versus the neurocranium. Now I'll ask you to make a little guide down here with uh, an area filled with the same color showing splanchnocranium and then neurocranium just as a legend for us to see because we will also have the juvenile skull down here so we'll have to fit that in. I'll leave that to you. So now I'd like you to add a few labels that I mention in the um, in the assignment and you can do it just like before uh, using the same font the Gilsons and making things to point at um, leader lines to point at things like the parietal bone or the mandible um, occipital you can look these up so using the line tool of course we're just going to use black so you have to give it a black stroke and I'd like you to, in the stroke menu, you can add <clears throat> arrowheads here. We're not pointing at specific objects. So using, oops, wrong end. So using a, just a circle on the end is the best way to identify something like this. That's a little too big, so we can adjust the scale to get it down. And just like before, I'd also like you to add drop shadow because here's an area where the uh, figurative elements and the uh, content elements will compete. So you'll need something like a, um, a drop shadow. So under effect, stylized drop shadow. So we can see the preview here. So it's got to be quite close. Oops. So you see I hit enter before I finished. You can always find these things again in the appearance um, panel. There's my drop shadow. Just click on that to get it back. Give it full opacity. No blur. Could even be closer. Yeah, so it just gives enough definition to separate it out from here. And then you can add your labels. And I'd like you to match the way you label the top of the adult specimen with the juvenile specimen. So the pattern of how things are laid out should match. So this would be, for example, parietal not a good font it's way too big just be a regular and try and be consistent with the way you label so if you're labeling with the word uh, the bottom left corner of the word near the leader line be consistent or um, if it has to be on the other side do the bottom right corner we just try and be consistent with that. And just check your font size to see if it seems like a reasonable size here. 10 or 12 looks like it would be good. And then you just have to oops, do the same thing for the other side or sorry, the other um, specimen, the juvenile, and lay things out. Now, I don't have the juvenile here, but if, for example, I just duplicate this anterior version, so 
right, my windows are all in the way here, just by dragging it onto the new layer palette. I want you to make sure that these things are all lined up. So, for example, the anterior should be lined up right in the middle. Now we can select these three separate things and use our line palette. We can use this one to align them around, along the midline here so that if I had these offset from each other, it would be more obvious and align these along the midline so they're lined up exactly. So ultimately you'll wind up with something like this, adults on the top, juvenile on the bottom, things lined up in the vertical, the proper labels in the proper place. This is all, mine is a little bit sloppy here, uh, just because I'm going quickly. These should all be lined up horizontally. They should be left aligned um, in the vertical. Same with this title. So all this should be lined up along that two centimeter border that I mentioned. And you will have labels going around here and around here. And you'll have this, both of these uh, showing the neurocranium and splanchnocranium with a legend showing these colors and what they mean in between here. And finally, you'll need a scale bar. Now here we're working at 50%, so we're going to have to make uh, a guide that is half a centimeter here. So I'm just doing one between 27 and 28. Now before we've done this with uh, just a line, so let me just do that here now. And I have to make sure it has a stroke. and. <clears throat> increase its stroke a little bit. Then we can just label this as one centimeter. And we should be using the same font. And I'll just line these things up. So you've got a few things to work out here, going through the whole process, but then making the arrangements in the middle um, in the way that works best with all the things you have to label.